when, 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 you're, <coughs> when you're not able to do something, and you think, because, well, it's not possible for me to do it, because it's not available to me. It's not possible for me, for example, to go to um, the North Pole because no one's offering a holiday there. Or it's, it's, it's not possible for me to, uh, I, I don't know, do a huge painting because which is 10 foot by 10 foot, and it's going to take me six months to do, because I need to work during that time. If I don't work, then I'll starve. So there's a, what the spectacle does is you think that what's impossible, what's not possible to supply money for, what's not possible in the infrastructure which has been created by the spectacle, you, you believe that it's, not, uh, that it's not possible, when in actual fact it's just not permitted. If it's a social relation which governs between people rather than just an arbitrary one where you're trying to do something with yourself, it's not that it's not possible, it's just not permitted to do. And that's the extent of his logic. That's the point I'd like to make. So he, he explains this by just, this, just the way this structure of the spectacle works. In the spectacle, a part of the world presents itself to the world and is superior to it. It's abstract, it's far, you can't see it. The spectacle is simply the common language of this separation. Spectators are linked solely by their one-way relationship to the very centre that keeps them isolated from each other. The spectacle thus reunites the separated, but it reunites them only in their separateness. So this is quite abstract because, in particular to the centre, it's got the image of, say, a centre. It, it, it means that because when we think of uh, capitalism, there's loads of spectacles everywhere and they, they, it's quite schizophrenic, they just cover a huge period and you don't know where to look. For him it's just one central relation. Of, of just this mechanism which works. It is for now, just in this argument. And I think the important thing here as well, the spectacle reunites the separated only in their separateness. So, I, 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 I don't know, um, when you go, say, to a uh, top shop and you try to talk to some of the men there, some, some of the women, they think, oh, they're, they're quite nice, they look quite intelligent and attractive, so you, you go up and talk to them. And, um, and, and depending on what they're wearing, you know, you try to have a conversation and they just go, oh. Because what they're, what, what they're dressed in, you know, any sense of personality would clearly interfere with it. So they, they, they just try to look like a model on a, you know, on a sheet of paper which you open and you just look at because that's what they imagine real life to be. You know, any sort of personality or smile will kind of give them wrinkles or something. I've, I've got no idea. But, you know, that's a, ma that's a major example. The point is that all of our relations are between each other are always mediated through something else. We're always mediated through spectacle. We never meet each other face to face. There's always something else. There's always, there's always what Lacan called the big other. You know, that, that thing which we feel watching us. Um, and I think that's quite important because this, this structure with the, the centre, we're all separated and being felt like we're watching at it or just looking at it, is, just to give an example of this, if anyone's come across it, is one given by Michel Foucault. I got on this, the smiley face because he's always looking a bit stern. So. Um, so, yeah, so one by Michel Foucault, which is in Discipline and Punish, which is the Panopticon, uh, if you ever heard of it. And it's kind of like this, where, the, where there's a, the Panopticon, this is a design of it, it was designed by Benson for prisons, where there's, there's a central tower and, and somebody in the tower, there doesn't actually need to be somebody in the tower, there's just a central tower and loads of cells surrounding it, and there's a window from the cell looking to the tower but not looking into other cells, because the one's too far, far away. So the relation is just between you and some central power, and you're separated from everybody else around you. And Fuqua says, well, you know, prisons are being designed like this, schools are being designed like this, hospitals are being designed like this. This is the way things are now working. And uh, it's a type of disciplinary power. Because unlike, say, with prisons, people aren't actually separated in a hospital, and people aren't actually separated at a school, but um, they feel that they're being watched all the time. And it's that sense of being watched which makes them act in a certain way. You know, because God used to do it. You know, with, you know Freud's stupid ego that someone's always watching you and telling you what to do. It's that type of thing. If someone's watching you, there doesn't need to be actually somebody watching you. It's the institution which contains the power. It's not any individual. It's just the, the, the spectacle, just the institution, whatever. It doesn't actually be someone there. Just as long as you feel as if you're being watched all the time, you'll be a little bit more disciplined in the way you go about life. Now, um, I'm trying to think of an example for this is when Today I went to go get the, the toothbrushes, we went to Tesco, has got on the bus, and the bus, it's one of those nasty buses where things happen, so you've got this uh, television which is looking at you, and you're looking at the television, and it's not just enough to observe you with a little discreet camera, they have to put a big television in there of you being observed, so you know you're being observed when, when you're on the bus. Has anyone seen that? Yeah. It's exactly the same. Or when you go to Tesco's, and right next to Tesco's at the door, there's, there's you know, it's really, really explicit. There's a guy there, a big security guy in black, and he's got this monitor, and 
loads of screens which you can look at and it's the same type of thing that, you know, look, you're being watched, I'm here, and this is Monster Vision 2. There's another one somewhere, but you can't find it. So, and it's exactly the same type of thing. Now, Fuchos example is slightly different to um, uh, to boards because it deals with institutions but institutions are made rather than just the whole economic sphere as a whole. So for board it's a lot more pervasive. That's kind of what the board's getting at here. That's the kind of influence and kind of separation he's dealing with. So um, this is what Foucault says, just to explain a bit further in his own words, the major effect of the panopticon to induce in the inmate a state of consciousness and permanent visibility that assures the automatic functioning of power. It's an automatic function. You don't need someone to actually look at you. You don't need someone to force you in any way. So as to arrange things so that the surveillance is permanent in its effects, even if it is discontinuous in its action, that the, perfect, the perfection of power should tend to render its actual exercise unnecessary. So, if anyone's interested, page 201. So, I'm just trying to give examples of this, the way this works, because I've, I've spoken very abstractly at the moment. Because, uh, first of all, I've, I've been talking about the spectacle as a, as a very abstract thing, it's just, just something which is there. It takes different forms. Because you're, you're probably thinking, well, you know, clearly economics doesn't work the same way as in, say, Bolivia or South America or in Australia and all these places. Uh, and, and the board gives us enough leeway to say, okay, fair enough. And he admits two forms <coughs> in the sight of the spectacle. He says, well, there's only, real, there's only really two types of the way society functions. And they're both spectacular in one way or the other. So it, 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 it's quite rigid still, but it gives them some leeway. And he says, the spectacle exists in a concentrated and diffuse form, <coughs> depending on the requirements of the particular stage of poverty it denies and supports. In both cases, this is the same thing as the panopticon, it, do not, um, it is nothing more than an image of happy harmony surrounded by desolation and horror at the calm centre of misery. It's very literary like that. So, sounds really cool. But the, the next one, it, it, I, I couldn't really paraphrase it very well, so I, I just sort of explain it. He, he, he explains the, the next paragraph, he explains the diffuse spectacle, and the next one, he explains the concentrated spectacle. Now, the concentrated spectacle is when uh, spectacular relations have been removed from several commodities or a plurality of commodities and put into just one single spe uh, spectacle. And an example of that would be uh, Stalinist Russia, where, the, where, where there's one all-powerful bureaucrat, Stalin, or, you know, the, the, um, a fictional example would be Big Brother. There's Big Brother, but he, an example he uses a lot is Stalin. So there'll, there'll be Stalin and Stalin's looking at you, and you feel like a personal relation going on with Stalin rather than things like, I don't know, cars and things, you, you're only allowed a hemp sack to wear and stuff. So, I don't know what Soviet Union was like, if anyone's from there, but, I don't know, so don't offend anyone. But anyway, um, that's, that's generally how the, 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 the concentrated spectacle works, and it's maintained, it's maintained by violence. It has to be maintained in a very, very structured way to stop the spectacle from exploding out into just different competing spectacles. Because spectacles and commodities, as we know, the way capitalism works, naturally spreads out to com uh, competition. And that's exactly what the diffuse spectacle is. A diffuse spectacle is when the economy is just given free reign, it's not rigidified in any way, and uh, loads of spectacles will just compete with one another just to grow in strongly, and it's, it's political economy, basically. That's, that's all it is. And it develops in a really, really strong and aggra aggra uh, aggravating way. And in that sense, that's that more, instead of the, the paranoid thing with Stalin, where we're like, oh no, you know, that modernist paranoia is Stalin looking at me, that type of thing. It's, it's more of a schizophrenic, where do I go for my next hit type of spectacular experience. So, but it's still spectacular. It's still the same pretty much thing going on. It's the one we're experiencing at the moment.